Hi, welcome back to my Knit 365 channel. My name is Martin and I am recording this at home today on Sunday the 18th of April. Um, I live in Cardiff in South Wales and it is a gloriously sunny day today. Um, this is good light for filming, but I'm a little bit squinty um, because the big window is just in front of me. There's nowhere really in the flat that I can film today with great light. So I hope this is okay. Um, I've got a little bit of a pinky head. We went for a lovely long walk yesterday and bald person problems again. I've caught the sun a little bit. Um, I think I did that in the last video as well, but you'd think I'd learn, wouldn't you? It just, it's April. I shouldn't need sun cream, but clearly I do. So today's video is a deep dive into my Babette blanket. And I touched on um, this blanket in my March roundup where I had made um, a couple of the squares and I'll show you that in a moment, but I wasn't really happy with how the fabric was being created. So what I've done over the last week or so is I've done some thinking, I've done some swatching. Let's get the contradiction out of the way right from the beginning. The last mini project video was me talking about Intarsia and Mark's Argyle jumper and that video pretty much started by me saying I never swatch I don't see the point. I'm neither too loose nor too tight. I just carry on This video is all about swatching. So I absolutely get the contradiction. It's fine There's a reason why we've swatched and I guess it is swatching um, But it's more practicing. I've kind of I, I've, I've swatched dabbled created some samples to see what I think would work best. So this video, it's just gonna be a little mini blog. It's not a um, one of my usual um, monthly roundup videos, um, which covers lots of fibery content. Um, and this is only gonna talk about the beginning of the Bet Babette blanket as I get going to share some of my thoughts really around how I've chosen the, um, the approach for this project. Um, and the idea is that I'm going to keep checking in with this in my monthly roundups. Um, this isn't a project vlog where we're going to go from beginning to the end because I'm only just starting this project. It's going to take a long time. So if I recorded footage to then keep updating and put it into a big project vlog from start to finish, you'd be waiting a year. I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to take me to do, but I wanted to just share this with you today because um, I think it was really interesting um, about the different swatches and what I've discovered. So let's get straight into it. This is what I showed in the March video. Um, actually, let me pop a picture on screen now. So that is the Babette blanket that I am hoping to create. And this is section four of the blanket. So um, I am using some lovely Rowan felted tweed and I have lots of different colors. Um, and if you've seen some of my previous videos when I've talked about this project, it is based on a calf facet pattern that I knit a jumper for myself called the Guernsey sweater. Um, I'll pop a picture of that on screen so you can see that jumper. And I've got loads and loads of wool left over and I wanted something that would show off all of those colors um, be because I don't have enough of the wool to make another jumper, for example, but I've got lots of odds and sods and I have um, bought some wool from um, D-Stash. I've been kindly gifted some wool by the lovely Ange of Yarn and Yarns. So I'm using that and I'm gonna create the Babette blanket, the style, I love the multicolors. I love um, the big squares, the small squares, but this is what I've created and I'm not happy with this. So the, um, the whole point of the Babette is that it's different sizes and in the pattern, I think it calls for a cotton wool, not cotton wool, cotton yarn. That's what I meant. And I'm using um, the Rowan Felted Tweed, which is 
50% wool, 50, uh, 25% alpaca, and 25% viscous. So it's a lot crunchier, it's a lot stiffer than, um, than a cotton. But when I look at this, there's not a lot of give in it. It feels really crispy. It doesn't feel oh, cozy and snuggled like you wanna get underneath it. Um, and I did touch on this in my last video, which is why I said I was gonna do a separate update. I don't actually like the pattern in this wool. It's absolutely nothing to do with the pattern. Um, if I hold this still, you can see we're creating these lovely squares. So this is a four round square using three colors. So the pattern has a schematic that tells you whether it's a, um, a two round square or a four round square. There are some sixes, some eights and some tens, I think. And it tells you how many different colors you should be using. But what this pattern um, grows obviously from the center out um, and it's single crochets mainly um, with um, some double singles in the corner. So you put two single crochets. Um, these are British terms. I don't know what the American term is for a double crochet. Oh, is that a single crochet? I think so. So it's a UK double, a, an American single. So you put two doubles in the corner. Um, you get the idea. And if I hold it out nice, it kind of looks square. But then if I look at this one, this one looks like a rectangle because it's wider than it is tall. And I promise I followed the pattern to the letter. Um, and then this one is kind of the same shape, but again, it's rectangular, not square. This one, again, I'm pretty sure I followed the pattern, but like there's a bit of a dip in it. So you get the idea. I'm really not happy with how the pattern's turning out in this wool. And I do think it's a little bit because of the, the felted nature of the wool. I just don't think it works as well with that type of pattern. And I don't think that's exclusive to this blanket. Um, I, I'll actually post a link in the comments below to one of my written blogs. So as well as this Knit365 channel, I have a more traditional written blog where I talk about some of my projects and I actually started off with a written blog and then developed this to YouTube. Um, I did some cast-ons the Christmas before last, I think, and I ended up frogging two or three of the patterns because the wool just didn't go with the pattern. Um, the wool was too busy and you couldn't see the pattern or the pattern was too busy and didn't show off the wool. And sometimes I think that that's just what it is. You know, you have an idea of a pattern in mind, you pick the wool, you think it's the perfect project, you get started and you just, they just don't work for whatever reason. So I don't think it's the pattern, it's it's me. Um, I am a knitter who can crochet. I've done some crochet, but I'm absolutely a knitter before I'm a crocheter. So this weird looky looking bumpy one here compared to this one here it probably is me um working out where to place each of the stitches but i really concentrated i promise you i tried to make this as perfect as i could and and look at it i just don't like it so what i wanted to do was change the pattern because I really love the concept of the Babette blanket and I've done a lot of research and there are there seem to be other Babette style blankets and I I don't know the 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 uh heritage legacy of Babette um but if you google Babette blanket it appears that there it, it's a style of a blanket with multi-colors and lots of different size squares. Um, so the pattern that I'm using gives you a schematic. There are plenty of other patterns out there for Babette style blankets. So what I've decided to do is follow the concept of the Babette, as in I'm going to have lots of different sizes and lots of different colors, but I'm not gonna follow the actual style um, that, I, that my original pattern um, provides. So step one, unhappy with the fabric, too crispy, doesn't really flow, not very neat. 
So I thought, well, what could I do instead? Because I've got all this wool. I still want to make a blanket. I still want something Babette-esque. So I thought about doing grannies um, and a traditional granny square where you start from the centre again, but you have trebles this time. So UK, um, US doubles, UK trebles. Um, you create almost the cross and then you put two trebles in the corners and then the next round, two trebles in the corner, but a treble in the middle. So this was crocheted on a four and a half, uh, a four mil needle um, in the Rowan felted tweed. This was also crocheted on a four mil needle. No, I tell a lie. This was a three and a half mil needle and this was also a three and a half mil needle. And you can see just by switching up the pattern, almost from doubles to trebles, you get something that is considerably bigger because obviously you have this open, this open texture. So I did that one as my first one and I thought, do I like it? Is it floppy enough? Is it too big? Um, I didn't think it was big enough actually. So this was done on a three and a half mil and then I went up to a four mil and this is even more loosey goosey. It's really um, quite loose in between these trebles because obviously it's a, a bigger needle than the yarn would traditionally be crocheted with. Um, so I then decided, well, if I've done a four and I've done a three and a half, I wonder what a three would look like. So I actually went down a hook size again and ended up with this as a, a size three. And I just thought that this was interesting. If I stack them up in the me saying I don't swatch, but actually what we've got here, <laughs> you can see the difference. Um, and I just thought it was useful to show you this because some of you out there may be newer crafters, lots of you are probably going to be like, yeah, Martin, of course that was what was going to happen. But if any of you are newer crafters, I thought it was quite a use useful visual link to kind of see the difference. It's the exact same pattern you can see in all of them. I've used the same wool and I've done it in the same pattern um, and the same order of colour. But look, we just get three completely different size squares. So I actually settled on the smaller one. I thought the three was gonna be what I wanted to do. But as I was reading through the comments on the last video, Stuart from the Wool Patch commented and said that um, one thing I could do is if I wanted to make grannies but make them a little bit smaller, is instead of doing a granny with two chains in between each treble, drop it down to one chain. So. I'm not giving anything away here. This isn't a copyright pattern. Grannies are universally crocheted around the world. But if you can see here, so we have these trebles that sit in the corner. This little bar that comes across the top, that's two stitches. Um, I don't have my hook to point them out, but you kind of have one stitch here and then one stitch here. So you do two, tre two chain stitches, then you do three trebles, then you have another two stitches, um, two chains, sorry, and then you do three trebles, chain two in the corner, three trebles, chain two, three trebles. You get the idea. So I tried that, and Stuart is a genius. So this is my finished swatch, and this is what I'm going to be doing. So this is the same as this swatch, so we took our three, we settled on a size three mil hook. I've then taken Stuart's idea and gone from two chains down to one chain, and this is what we end up with. Now, you'll see I've done an extra layer around here, and I'll come on to that in a moment, but if you imagine these two side by side, you can see the, the gray and the teal here, it's even smaller again. Now, these are the same stitches, they're trebles and the same wool, but just by taking one chain space out in between each of the trebles, it's actually shrunk. 
And if I try and show you as this is a, as another comparison, so this is a center, so this is just two rounds, but again, with just one treble, if I hold that up on here over the top of it, you can make out down the side and the bottom the same two rounds, the inner. So I just thought that was really interesting that just by losing one chain in all of the gaps around, how much smaller it gets. So we have ended up with this as my finished swatch. And this is what I'm gonna be making my Babette blanket out of. So it's going to be random colors and it's gonna be a traditional granny with trebles, but with only one chain space in between each of the stitches. Now, that is a winner, and I love it. What I have done though, is if I just flick back to the original Babette, where you have the different sizes, of course, if that was my finished, because such as here, I only have three colors. If I only have three colors here, well, I've got three rounds. But actually, on the Babette, I have, for example, this is a larger square, and then I have two smaller squares that I would attach on. Potentially then there's gonna be a big square that comes across here that joins onto all two. So if this was my center, I can't actually get two on here because these two are taller than this square here. So in order to do the Babette style, what I've had to do is make sure that I have a four round. So I've taken the three rounds that you've seen here and I've just put an extra row around it. So this is now a four round granny. But what this enables me to do is then easily pop the, let me try and hold this so you can see, I can pop the two little squares and still achieve that Babette style. So I'm thinking I will have twos, fours. I don't know whether I'm gonna have to do, maths is definitely not my strong point, so if you get this immediately, please comment. I don't know whether I could do a six, because six would come out to here. Maybe a six would enable me to put a third one on, or whether if I'm gonna put a third one on, I need to go to eight. There'll be a reason as to how they're multiples. So is it multiples of two? So it's always gonna be two, four, six, eight. Or is it two, then it doubles? So is it two, four, eight, 12? I don't know. We need to work that bit out as I'm going through the pattern. But that's fine. I can work that out as I'm going. I'm gonna follow the pattern as a schematic. But we have succeeded. So I just thought I would pop along and give a very short update on my Babette. I'm gonna go, it's Sunday morning. Um, I've made a cup of coffee, Mark is still asleep. So I'm gonna go and wake him up with a cup of coffee now and I'm going to spend an hour crocheting to replace this one. So I will record a little bit of footage of me crocheting and I will pop back in a little while. Grab my colours. We are going to recreate this one. Although, excuse this sunlight, it's ridiculously sunny here in Cardiff on this Sunday.
And there we have it. We have my grannies. Welcome back. Ta-da! So I've created the four main square grannies, which correspond with the four in the original Babette. Plus I've done the two smaller ones. So you saw this one earlier, so I've now finished this second one as well. I'll turn the camera around in a moment and I will show uh, the comparison of these side by side. Um, I've done my ends as I was going, as you saw. Polish my halo. I'm gonna make sure I do that as I'm going. Um, I've left the center for the moment. Um, I don't know why, because I can't sew in the end. I've left the outer one because I'm not sure how I'm gonna sew these up yet. The Babette, the traditional pattern that I had, tells you to use the tails and sew in between each of the segments. Um, so I've, le I've sewn all the ends in as I'm going and I've snipped them off, but I've left the long tail um, in case I want to join them that way and I can use the tail to sew down. Um, but I might crochet them together. So the hexagon blanket that I made, um, that I finished off last year, um, is joined together with some um, double crochets, um, US single. So I might put them together and create a, a spine. I really do like that effect and I am, I don't have the wool near me, um, but I've got a really lovely dark, uh, it's a really dark charcoal. It's darker than that, slightly darker. Um, that's going to be my border around the blanket and I'm contemplating using that colour to um, join them all together because effectively each of these squares will then have a black frame around them which I think will be really striking um, and I'm just picturing this huge blanket with this lovely dark border and then each of the individual squares that are very colourful with that border around it. I need to have a practice of that. I can't really practice at the moment because I've only done this section, which is going along in a line. Um, and of course, if I was going to crochet these together, I would only be able to do up there for the moment. So I think I need to do the next section then I can work out what that looks like joining the two sections together. So I'll update you on that in one of my monthly round of videos, how I choose to join them. But I think my my plan will be very much to crochet them together. I think that spine will look really lovely. But if you've made a crochet blanket and you have um, any recommendations for how to join them, please let me know. Um, so that I'm kind of thinking it's gonna be a case of sew them together or crochet them together, just using a, um, a double crochet. But please let me know if you've got any thoughts. Um, so I will pop this around in a moment and I will just show you what they look like. So there we can see the comparison. So it's gonna be a bigger blanket because generally speaking, these are now much bigger than those, but I'm just so much happier. They lie flat, they're very neat, they're very ordered um, compared to the original. So I've tried to follow the colors that I did originally with my random selection that created sample one so that you can kind of see that comparison. Um, of course, I've had to add some extra colours um, to some of these just to complete the, the four rounds, but I'm obsessed with these colours, these greys, teals, blue, little pink. Um, little flash of colour on this one, little flash of colour in this one. So yeah, they're looking good. I hope you like it. I am really happy that I have um, switched the pattern over and I think these grannies are going to look lovely. And now I've got that sorted and I'm doing them as grannies, there's no pattern to follow. I know how to do them. I can do them for memory because um, it's quite straightforward. Um, the only bit I need to follow on the pattern now is which sizes to do so that I can know when I'm doing my fours, my twos, my sixes or eights or whatever that will be. Um, and I can get going. So the yarn is all ready. Um, I have my nanny's 
old knitting bag. I have fond memories of this as a child. I think you've seen this before with one of my crochet projects. I think I put Mark's mum's blanket in this. Um, but the random nature, so I have all of the blues and the greys in here. So I will look at the pattern and it will say I need three colours. So we'll have a, a mooch around and we'll go, okay, there's one. And then we need another one. Okay, there's two. So we'll dive into the bag and we'll pick out some random colours. And then I have a cotton bag here with the multicolours in. So again, we'll just be able to dive in and say, oh, look at that, nice little teal. So I've got the pops of colour in here, lovely purple, that teal. We've got a lovely uh, yellowy colour. Uh, what else have I got? This little sort of like a, I don't know what that is. It's like a gold, light goldy colour. Um, and then all of the, the lovely blues, the dark greys, etc., are all in this bag. So the idea will be dive in and get a colour, dive in and get some greys and blues. Although actually, now I've said that, that brown probably should be in the other bag, shouldn't it? Because this is probably a contrast colour. But you get the idea. I'm not editing that out seamless as always it's what you've come to expect in my videos uh so there we go i have my yarn ready i've got my grannies i feel like i can now get started with earnest on my babette so i hope you've enjoyed that mini project video I'm going to spend the rest of my Sunday now probably crocheting grannies. We are going to make a cook dinner a bit later on. We've got some TV box sets to finish. We've just finished last night, season one of 24. I've seen them all. Mark has never seen them, so I'm making him watch that. So we've got to probably start season two. Uh, we need to finish Peaky Blinders and I can't remember what else. There's one more that we nearly finished. No, it escapes me. But there we go. That is my lazy Sunday. And I hope you've enjoyed it. So thank you very much for your time. If you've liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't subscribe, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. It helps me to grow my channel. And I would love to have you here as part of my community. So please click on that subscribe button. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think of this video and if you have any hints and tips for my crochet blanket. Um, I will be back in a couple of weeks time with my end of April roundup as well as announcing the winner of my 1000 giveaway subscriber prize. So if you've not yet watched that 1000 giveaway video, pop along and find out how you can be in with a chance of winning some lovely goodies. I have a secret project coming up that I can tease and say I have a secret project coming up but I'm not allowed to talk about the project and I'm not allowed to talk about the wall so I'm going to start filming and that will be a proper end-to-end -end project video. Um, I don't think I can talk about it in my April roundup so I'm, I'm being a tease but there will be some exciting content coming I promise you um, but I'll be back in a couple of weeks time with my April roundup. I will share my progress on my Babette Mark's jumper, still totally addicted to. We are, uh, I'm doing well. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. And until we speak again, happy crafting.